do angels do in heaven? Number one, John reveals it to us in the book of Revelation. One of the essential descriptions of angels is this. They lead God's people in redemptive worship. In the book of Revelation, we learn about the activities angels perform in heaven. Angels in heaven are saturated with the adoration of God as a consequence of the Lamb's redemptive work. And when he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the twenty-four elders fell down before the Lamb, Christ, each one holding a harp and golden bowls full of fragrant incense, which are the prayers of the saints, God's people, and they sang a new song of glorious redemption. Immediately after the Lamb took the scroll, the response was immediate. High-ranking angels and redeemed man united in worshiping the Lamb. The harp is properly a kind of guitar. This passage started the idea that people in heaven would have harps, because worship in heaven is accompanied by music. Worthy and deserving are you to take the scroll and to break its seals. For you were slain, sacrificed, and with your blood you purchased people for God from every tribe and language and people and nation. You have made them to be a kingdom of royal subjects and priests to our God, and they will reign on the earth. Then I looked, and I heard the voice of many angels around the throne, and the voice of the living creatures and the elders, and they numbered myriads of myriads, and thousands of thousands, innumerable, saying in a loud voice, Worthy and deserving is the Lamb that was sacrificed, to receive power and riches and wisdom and might, and honor and glory and blessing. In the praise of Revelation chapter 4 verse 11, the focus was on God's work of creation. Here, the focus is on His work of redemption. Countless angels join in, expressing the worthiness of the Lamb because of the redemption He completed. And I heard every created thing that is in heaven or on earth or under the earth, in Hades, the realm of the dead, or on the sea, and everything that is in them saying together, To him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, Christ, be blessing and honor and glory and dominion forever and ever. In Revelation chapter 4 verses 9 and 10, the angels prompted the elders into worship. The elders seem to be prompting the angels here. There is a wonderful cycle in heaven with the angels and elders encouraging one another to praise more and more. In their song, the angels did not offer praise for their redemption. This is because angels are not subjects of this redemption, but are attentive watchers of it, and therefore can praise God because of it. The angels can notice the superiority of God's work in saving fallen men. So in response, they credit power, riches, wisdom, strength, honor, glory, and blessing to the Lamb. In the same manner, we can praise God for the way He works in other people's lives. Angels are worship leaders. There are images of angels on some altars in the great cathedrals. In this art, angels are portrayed offering incense, that is, the people's prayers. Praying, interceding, and worshiping are the responsibilities of angels. Angels are ministers in a story about God. Fascination with angel messengers can creep dangerously close to idolatry. Through the course of history, people have repeatedly fallen into the trap of worshiping angels rather than God. In point of fact, the Apostle Paul cautioned the church in Colossae against worshiping angels. The Apostle John needed to be told not to worship an angel when one appeared to him. Angels worship God. Angels that don't summon us to see God are not doing God's work. Rather, they are the rebellious, bad angels often called demons or evil spirits. 
Revelation chapter 7, verses 11 through 12. And all the angels were standing around the throne, and around the twenty-four elders and the four living creatures. And they fell to their faces before the throne and worshipped God, saying, Amen, blessing and glory and majesty and wisdom, and thanksgiving and honor and power and might belong to our God forever and ever. Amen. As the incredible multitude glorifies God, the others in heaven are compelled to merge their voices in praise. Around the throne, all created beings join in. As these other beings hear the adoration the great multitude brings to God, they see more clearly the power and wisdom and majesty of God. They can worship God all the more by witnessing the salvation He brought to the incredible multitude. Number 2. David, as a prophet, also reveals what the angels in heaven do in Psalm chapter 148, verses 1 and 2. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise Him in the heights. Praise Him, all His angels. Praise Him, all His hosts, armies. The psalmist considered that all heavenly beings and bodies give praise to Yahweh. Israelites' God was not a local deity who only wanted Israel's honor. He was and is God over all, and because of this, deserves such praise in the heights. By their very nature and being, the heavens proclaim the glory of God according to Psalm 19. The psalmist called upon all angelic beings to give God praise. This is the constant occupation of the living creatures surrounding God's throne. The company of faithful angels is like a great army, all his hosts. Other angelic beings fell because they would not properly honor God. Isaiah chapter 14 verses 12 through 15 How you have fallen from heaven, O star of the morning, light bringer, sun of the dawn, you have been cut down to the ground, you who have weakened the nations, king of Babylon. But you said in your heart, I will ascend to heaven, I will raise my throne above the stars of God, I will sit on the mount of assembly in the remote parts of the north, I will ascend above the heights of the clouds, I will make myself like the Most High. But in fact, you will be brought down to Sheol, to the remote recesses of the pit, the region of the dead. Number 3. Isaiah The seraphim also share this truth with us. If you are yet to be familiar with the seraphim, the prophet Isaiah tells us that the seraphim are six winged fiery angels who surround God as he sits upon his exalted throne and who worship God continually. Isaiah 6. The seraphim also minister to the Lord and serve as his agents of purification, as demonstrated by their cleansing of Isaiah's sins before he began his prophetic ministry. Isaiah describes his intense vision of God's heavenly court in that biblical chapter. The prophet specifically saw God seated on an exalted throne surrounded by flying angels known as seraphim. Isaiah chapter 6 verses 1 through 7 In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Above it stood the seraphims, each one had six wings, with twain he covered his face, and with twain he covered his feet, and with twain he did fly. And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Each set of the seraphim's wings serves a different purpose. One set covers the face, denoting reverence and awe, and acts as protection from the radiance of God's glory. Another set is used for flying, assisting in their swift servitude. 
and the third set is used to cover the seraphim's feet, humbly concealing their unworthiness while in God's holy presence. God created seraphim as sinless creatures, but they are not to be confused with God. The seraphim, in fact, spend their days and nights worshiping God for his holiness. During this never-ending worship, they exclaim, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. The importance of the seraphim's close proximity to God, combined with their revelatory praise, cannot be overstated. When the seraphim say, The whole earth is full of his glory, they are giving a first-hand account of what they see from heaven's apex. The seraphim repeatedly proclaim God's supreme holiness and glory in Isaiah's vision. In God's presence, the seraphim do not address God directly, but rather call out to one another. And they were calling to one another, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. To be holy means to be distinguished and revered. This thrice invocation of the word holy to describe God's sacred nature appears only twice in the Bible, both times by angels to someone transported in a vision to God's throne. The other passage that contains this thrice invocation of God's holiness is found in Revelation chapter 4 verse 8, which also refers to six winged angels surrounding God's heavenly throne and constantly proclaiming God's glory. It is significant that the seraphim in Isaiah's vision use a threefold repetition of God's holiness, known as the Trihagion. The number three represented completeness and stability in ancient Judaism, and it is used here to connote God's wholeness as the beginning, middle, and end. Announcing God's holiness three times implies God's eternal nature, which is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 8 God's holiness is the most difficult of all God's attributes to explain, partly because it is one of his essential characteristics that man does not share inherently. We are created in the image of God, and we can share many of his characteristics, albeit to a much lesser extent love, mercy, faithfulness, and so on. Some of God's characteristics, however, such as omnipresence, omniscience, and omnipotence, will never be shared by created beings. Similarly, holiness is not an inherent part of our nature. We only become holy in relationship to Christ. It is a holiness that has been imbued. Only in Christ do we become God's righteousness? 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21 God's holiness is what distinguishes Him from all other beings, what distinguishes Him from everything else. God's holiness is more than His sinless purity or perfection. It is the essence of His otherness, His transcendence. God's holiness embodies the mystery of His awesomeness, and inspires us to gaze in awe at him as we begin to grasp just a fraction of his majesty. In his vision described in Isaiah 6, Isaiah was a first-hand witness to God's holiness. Despite the fact that Isaiah was a God-fearing prophet and a righteous man, his reaction to the vision of God's holiness was to become aware of his own sinfulness and despair for his life. Isaiah chapter 6 verse 5 even the angels in God's presence who cried out, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty, covered their faces and feet with four of their six wings. Covering one's face and feet undoubtedly conveys the reverence and awe inspired by God's immediate presence. Exodus chapter 3 verses 4 and 5 And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here am I. And he said, Draw not nigh hither. Put off thy shoes from off thy feet. 
for the place whereon thou standest is holy ground. And if the pure and holy seraphim show such reverence in the presence of the Lord, how much more so should we sinful creatures approach him? The angel's reverence for God should remind us of our own arrogance when we rush thoughtlessly and irreverently into his presence, as we frequently do because we do not understand his holiness. In Revelation 4, John's vision of God's throne was similar to that of Isaiah. In reverence and awe of the Holy One, living creatures gathered around the throne cried out, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Revelation chapter 4 verse 8 And to the four living creatures, each one of them having six wings, are full of eyes all over and within, underneath their wings. And day and night they never stop saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God, the Almighty, the Omnipotent, the Ruler of all, who was and who is and who is to come, the unchanging eternal God. The seraphim's ministry is to extol the name and character of God in heaven. Because they are positioned above the throne, their ministry is directly related to God and His heavenly throne, as opposed to the cherubim, who are beside it. The seraphim's functions have not always been agreed upon by Bible scholars, but one thing is certain. They are constantly glorifying God. Number 4. They worship God. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 6. And when he again brings the firstborn, highest ranking son into the world, he says, and all the angels of God are to worship him. Deuteronomy chapter 32 verse 43 lets us know that Jesus is superior as he is the object of divine worship. He is not an angelic worshiper. He is worshiped by the angels. However, he does not worship among them. Revelation 5 provides a peek at the angelic worship of Jesus. Deuteronomy chapter 32 verse 43 Rejoice, O nations, with his people, for he will avenge the blood of his servants, and will render vengeance on his adversaries, and will atone for his land and his people. Hebrews paints Jesus as the ultimate revelation of God, superior to the prophets or the angels. Jesus is the exact representation of God and has a position above everyone. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 3 The Son is the radiance and only expression of the glory of our awesome God, reflecting God's Shekinah glory, the light being, the brilliant light of the divine, and the exact representation and perfect imprint of His Father's essence, and upholding and maintaining and propelling all things, the entire physical and spiritual universe, by his powerful word, carrying the universe along to its predetermined goal. When he himself, and no other, had by offering himself on the cross as a sacrifice for sin, accomplished purification from sins, and established our freedom from guilt, he sat down, revealing his completed work at the right hand of the Majesty on high, revealing his divine authority. Jesus displayed his strength in creation and salvation. He is the strongest leader, and even the angels follow him. Angels serve as a wonderful example for Christians to follow in terms of obeying the Lord and giving praise to his name. To tell the truth, we can join the worship of the angels in praising God and say with the psalmist. Psalm chapter 150 verse 6 Let everything that has breath and every breath of life praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. All the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. They fell down on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, saying, Amen. Praise and glory, and wisdom and thanks and honor, and power and strength be to our God forever and ever. Amen.